Hey everyone, it's me, Ian, from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Expert. And we are the Last Mile Profits. And today we're delving into one of our, well, particularly Marek's, favourite topics, and that is parcel lockers. But today, Marek, we're going to take a data-driven approach. which Very Amazonian, I'd say. Very Amazonian. Well, I, that's how I live my life. <laughs> like an Amazonian. Um, um, so... Parcel lockers, one of the, the comments that often comes up when we talk about parcel lockers, and even out of home delivery in general, is about how efficient it is compared to delivery to the doorstep. And Mark, you'd be familiar with this. This is where people say, well, if the customer has to leave the house to go to the parcel locker to collect the parcel, how efficient is that versus the driver coming to the door as part of a milk run? And there's always, Absolutely. yeah, there's a discussion then about trip chaining and a discussion about density of lockers, but we'll just... Anyway, yeah, go on. But I think there are two sides. For the customer, trip chaining, which is something you taught me, uh, means that actually he or she can deal with several things in one point. So it's convenient for the it's customer. It's like doing your Saturday morning shopping. You go, you go to the groceries and the newspaper and you get something else. You do a few things while you're out instead of just going, you know, doing three separate trips, let's say. Yeah. But the locker makes it even easier because at least the parcel part of the trip is in the same place. So you're doing several things, but without having to go the extra point. So from a customer perspective, it's convenient because he trip chains, plus he chooses when. From a courier side, and this is the bit that really shocked me because, you know, we said this is going to be... So this is where we're referring to this data from a study from a few years ago, but it's really interesting. Was it by, Was this research done in Poland? Yeah, it's Polish research by an author called Mr. Bilic. Uh, in 2014, so it's a bit old, but actually I think it's still pretty relevant. And it, it gives us real data to prove something that actually we all know anyway. So let's have a look at this data, Marek. This is, just to share with us, it's a comparison between a courier and a parcel lock. So you're a bit familiar with this, so just share with us what that's about. Yeah, so basically it will be a standard to door courier route, and it will be an impost parcel locker courier route. With a dedicated courier. All right, so with a dedicated courier, so it's one courier that goes out and services the parcel lockers, is that right? Co- correct, and he will have specialization. Just one caveat, uh, Ian, and everyone who's listening, this is a couple of years old, and it shows that the daily courier uh, delivery or the number of deliveries is 60, which I think uh, is relatively low, particularly, yeah. particularly if you're taking urban routes. If it's suburban and rural, okay, maybe. But nevertheless, the relative difference is going to be, I think, pretty much there. So that's, well, let's start with that. The parcels per delivery driver, it said 60 for the courier driver and 600 for the in-post driver. Now, let's say that the courier driver is now taking out quite a few more than that to fill up the van. Still, that is quite a difference in parcels being serviced by one driver in one day. And you know how it works here? A a, a typical stop in a country like Poland will be something like 1.2 or 1.3 parcels for a to-door stop. Locker at the moment is going to be probably closer to 50 per stop. So if you think about it, he only needs to do 12 stop to a locker at 50 times a pop, which is pretty doable during a day and he has achieved several times more than a super efficient to door courier can do and then there's a discussion about emissions so if you're delivering more parcels per stop and you are according to this research driving less kilometers as well um, it's suggesting that it was 150 kilometers per driver per day versus 70 for the parcel locker network um but the emissions this is all i thought was the startling part co2 emissions per parcel 300 grams for the courier versus 14 grams for the parcel locker. Now this isn't an ad for parcel lockers everybody before you start filling a comment section <laughs> below. But uh, yeah, this for me, even if, uh, if we allow for more efficient vehicles delivering now versus five years ago and all those sorts of things, it's still quite a difference. Absolutely, and, and to be fair, so that we're not judged as being you know just pro lockers, Kudos will give a much better effect than to door as well. Not as good as parcels because you're going to have very few kudos that can have this volume. No, parcels. that's that's yeah. quite right. There's a, a there's more a, quite a capacity issue at many pudo points because they're not set up to be dedicated pudo points. If that makes sense, compared to a locker which has how many doors? Yeah, you know, how long is a piece of string? It can exactly. have exactly 
Right. Whereas it's very difficult for a post office. I mean, I know a post office in Western Australia that when it gets hammered with those sorts, it does sometimes get those sort of volumes a day. But Australia Post has to put a van outside, a dedicated van outside, just to do to distribute parcels. Okay. Now that is a really is an exception, but it just gives an idea of the capacity of these lockers um, compared to over the counter collection. Can I just jump in there? I think what this is telling us, because the locker is a is, is a machine that does things that we could do. In other ways but i think the key message from my perspective anyway i'll be interested in what you reckon but is that by having let's call it an urban consolidation point that's where you save huge amounts of time so the courier is much more efficient it's where you reduce the carbon footprint and actually if you come back to your trip chaining potentially make the customer's life easier anyway so it's it's win 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 i know that some people will jump in the comment section again and be real cheerleaders for parcel lockers and I, I, I like parcel lockers, but I also think that ongoing, there will be a real continued need by customers or a desire from customers for two-door delivery, as well as having the alternative. So there, there will need to be both networks, right? Absolutely. There's always going to be a requirement for both. And what you will probably find, subject to cultural patterns and others, some places like the Nordics are likely to have more out of home. Oh, it's also and about availability as well, though, of real estate. I, mean, I know that there are some networks that would love to have more parcel lockers, but they can't find anywhere to put them. All, all distances, because if you're, if you're in northern Sweden, it's really, really hard to, to have a to-door service. So, you know, I'd say that it's going to be a geographic thing, a cultural thing, and you'll get places like the UK where I think to-door will be strong because of specifics such as leave with neighbour and leave safe. But this is an important alternative and it will need to be there. So share your comments below, everybody. Let us know what you think in the comments section and hello to everybody from the parcel locker manufacturers who are currently hammering away at their keyboards, letting us know what they think, where we went wrong in this conversation, where we went right. Um, Love to hear from everybody because we've had some really good discussions in the comments on LinkedIn about these podcasts, podcasts, there I go again, these videos that we've been producing. Video casts, Mr. Kerr. Video casts, vodcasts, there's some term for them, I don't know. Young, someone young will tell us what they are. Share your comments below. Marek Rzecki, thanks for being part of this today. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everybody. Hey, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this episode of The Last File Profits. Make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and also the notifications bell so you get a notification every time we add a new video to this channel. Look forward to sharing more stuff with you on The Last Mile Profits.